Hey guys, I'm back. I'm going to work on part two of this journal spread that I started uh, where I cut the waterfall tabs out of the pages with the dilution journal block. I just laid it there. What I did um, since then, two things. I pushed the color back a little bit just using a baby wipe and a little bit of white gesso just to soften it a bit and then I took my crocodile and punched holes along the edges of these two tabs and smaller ones along the bottom edge of this page and I've done a little bit of thinking about how I want to proceed not a lot but I have some ideas that I think will help finish these pages off so I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to start back here because what I'm going to do is um, attach this flap to this one so that I have pockets here. I want two pockets. So I'm going to start back here because that will be the easiest um, to get finished kind of quickly. So I'm going to take this same piece of drywall tape that I used to create the texture down here and I'm just going to spray some ink through it just to get a little pattern going back here on this piece where it pokes out. And I'm going to try to cover up everything else in the vicinity because that stuff goes everywhere. So let's see if this works. because. I'm a sloppy sprayer. All right, and I just have the dist distress spray stain in black soot. And give it a little shake. And see what I mean? Everywhere. I don't leave it like that. Nice hands, huh? Very artsy. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> okay. So, ew, very wet. That aside. And, and guys, this is water soluble. So, anything we put on top of it that is a wet media is going to reactivate the spray so you gotta bear that in mind when you're using it all right so i'm going to dry that real quick and then we'll move along All right, I'm tired of trying to dry that. It stays shiny, so it's hard to tell if it's dry. I can see places where it's dry and other places it's still super shiny, so I'm not sure how dry that is. But I'm going to proceed here. So I'm just going to use this Prima Cling Stamp. It's just a text stamp with some brown ink. And I'm just going to go down along this edge here. I'm running out of space. I got my craft mat full of spray. So, all right. My, well, that's okay. It's very subtle. My brown ink pad is kind of dry, so we'll do our best here. Yeah, that's okay. Got a couple little bare spots, but that's all right. So I just used archival ink, as you can tell by the package how old it is, 
but it's archival ink and coffee and I just re-ink it with the re-inkers clean it off a little bit okay so that's that edge I really for as much space as I have I have no room it's ridiculous Okay, and then the tags will cover up those little spots right there. I'm going to turn on the fan, which will be very loud. really stinky but most of it's pulled out of here now so I think I'm safe um, so now this shouldn't smear I can't tell if it's smearing because I got so much yeah it's still smearing all right so wish I hadn't done that but that's all right I guess we'll just have to wait for it to dry really really good I'm going to where is it matte super heavy gel and glue down the bottom and the top of this page so that in the middle so that I have some pockets I need an old brush which I have many of okay so I'm just gonna eyeball it my tags are just that I want to put in these pockets are just regular old shipping tags that I made a long time ago and they've been in my stash forever so I figured this is a good place to use them that does come in handy I hope I didn't go over too far no okay that goes all the way over there you see these divots? I don't know if you were watching the video a while back when um, my iPad, which I have attached to a articulating arm and then a, a holder, and it's above my head. And the whole works came tumbling down. And I guess it was... <laughs> The divots are a small price to pay for my iPad having a landing spot because it's not in the case. It won't fit in the holder with, well, it's in the case. So, yeah, it came down in the corner of my iPad, landed right on the that top edge of my journal, and made a big divot through quite a few pages. It goes all the way back here finally disappears but yeah it's it's been every page for quite a while that I've been dealing with that little divot little tear at the top of the page okay so now my pockets are done I have a black spot right there and I have my tags I'm not going to stick them in until this dries more but they will go right in there I may do some more on top of these I did these a long time ago just with some there goes my phone that's fine um, just with some little magazine cutouts and some words and these little Tim Holtz embellishments this one says inspire and this one says create and then just some torn fabric through the holes so I think they'll look cute sticking out of there the colors were right so I may do a little um, edging with the stabilo or something around some of these and maybe put a word on this one it's been a long time that I did these but that's what I'm gonna put in there and I'm gonna wait just a few for this to dry more I may go at it with the hair dryer again so I'll be back I'm just going to take my baby wipe, which is filthy, 
and do this and just get a little texture on there. Just push some of that dark to the background a little more. And then do the same thing over here and just kind of push everything back. That's pretty good. I like it. One more layer, right? So I think those are dry. I'm going to stick these in just to get an idea whether it looks like I wanted it to. I guess I'm not going to go as much of an angle as I thought because oh, where I put the glue. That's good. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm going to figure out what I want here because I know what I'm doing here. And this will just kind of, so this I'm kind of looking at this as a page, this as a page. So I think I need to bring in some of this more of that yellowy color. I love where the black spray mixed in <clears throat> or over top of the yellow iron oxide and we have these kind of really pretty purple undertones. Can you see them? It changed the color. I really like it. Plus I need to bring these closer in line with this color. So I'm going to figure that out. I'm back. <clears throat> I gussied up my tags a little bit to better blend here. I just used the Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold. Went over the whole thing <clears throat> to change the background color. Went around it with my Stabilo. That needs to be glued down better. And then on this one I just had a piece of a book spine that I tore up and added and stamped the word love. So. I think those look better now with that page, so those are ready to go. I'm going to stencil. <clears throat> this is an Andy Skinner stencil alphabet spaghetti. And I'm going to stencil this on here in black. I like it. I really like where it was lighter behind, but yeah, that works for me. And get some glue under this tag that's coming unglued. This just shows you the instability of a glue stick because I'm sure that's probably what I used. I made these tags for my shop, which was back in the 90s. I may have to put some double-sided tape or something underneath there. That's weird. Just don't want to stick. That's okay. We'll fix it later if need be. I'm just going to tuck these in here. Just like that. Okay, I like this. I do. This 
this is where I'm at with this page now. I have this little bird image that I thought I would put on here. So I placed him where I wanted him because I wanted him to peek out right here. And then I just scribbled. He was already on a little bit of a branch right there. So then I just scribbled more branches with my jelly roll pen. And when that's good and dry, I think I'll do the same thing as I did here and just kind of go over it with the transparent yellow to blend it in. Or because the bird is black and white, I might leave it. It doesn't seem as stark now with the bird on there. We'll see. I'm just going to glue this guy down. I did take a few minutes off camera to clean up because, boy, I had a mess here. <laughs> So I'm just going to use this heavy. And this bird image was just a printout, I think, Graphics Fairy. And um, I tried to use different oils to do, see if I could do a inkjet transfer with oil. You know how you do with the wintergreen oil or the citrus solve with a laser print and I thought oh, I'm just gonna try it and see what it does yeah well it didn't work but what it did do which I really liked is it made this paper really transparent not really transparent but the white you can see through it and that was just regular old cheap printer paper that it was printed out on so at least I know it does that. I kind of like that you can see through it. You get a little texture through the paper from the background. So it wasn't a total fail. Not a total fail. I'm just, since it was oil on there, I'm just hoping that he's going to stick okay. He seems to be sticking all right. So. Every day is an experiment, as I say. I'm just pressing out any bubbles with my brush. Clean up any excess gobbies around the edges. And yeah, I think it's going to be okay. So the only thing left I think that I want to do here, it's already pretty busy and with the tags in this pocket page here, I think I will look for just a sentiment or something to put up in this area, just black and white to keep with this black and white. Um, and then I'm going to call this spread done and then we can work on this one. And now my dog wants to go outside. so. I'm going to go do that and let that glue dry. I'll be back. Okay, the dog's out, so he'll probably bark in a minute to come back in. But after I put him out, I forgot that I was going to use this cheesecloth, this rusty cheesecloth. So I just took a piece, took a length of it similar to this. It was a little longer than this. And just tied an overhand knot and glued the knot down first. And then I just pulled it out where I want it, wanted it in tacked it down with some the heavy matte super heavy gel and it's wet but while that's drying I'm going to add some color to the bird using the distress crayons let's see how that goes just I don't want him like completely colored in I just want like a soft Obviously now it's not a sparrow anymore, it's a robin. I like robins. Robins mean spring and it's like 17 degrees here today, so I would welcome spring. I've lived in Ohio my whole life and I'm so over Ohio winters. I'm right on the lake, Lake Erie, and it gets cold and snowy and I'm just getting too old to shovel and do all that stuff. I mean, you got to do it right, but I don't like it. I don't have a brown scribble stick, 
so I'm just going to go in with just a little yellow because it'll tie in. Now it's a fantasy bird. <laughs> but it will tie in with the rest of the page, so I'm okay with it not being a actual bird. Colors of an actual bird. Just my bird. But I, lo I love the way this transparent accidental transparent paper looks on here and it's taken the distress crayon really well so I really like that I like it let's see maybe I can make I have purple and green or red and green and I'll go for purple and green what I'm trying to do is make a brown and I'm just going to scribble some on my mat and mix them together and see if I can't get a brown-ish color. Because I want brown. That's kind of brown. Trouble is when you mix them up with your finger, then all the brown's on your finger. Not so much on the craft mat anymore. Yeah, that's brown. See, brown. It's really good to know your color wheel. Comes in handy. Go over that yellow so tone it down a little bit. I like it on his head. I'm going to make some more here. Just want to catch that white outline a little bit with the brown color. Maybe a little onto the limb here. Oh wait, it's water reactive. Maybe I'll give it a little spritz or wet my finger. That would be better. So it doesn't end up, yeah, that's better. I'm going to go on here. Tone that white back a little bit. Okay, we're on to this.